just 10 minutes down the road from where I live is one of the most exciting conservation projects I've ever seen. And that is daylighting creeks in the suburbs of the city where I live. So there are the old concrete drains where storm water will be quickly taken away via great big pipes running underground. So for a very long time, whenever there were storms and heavy rain, the important thing in most cities was to take the water away as quickly as possible, which meant we had a lot of these concrete um, channels that would divert often very dirty water straight down to the ocean as fast as possible along concrete canals. In this local area, they didn't have a concrete canal, they actually have a grassy depression so that when there are storm waters, these um, become little creeks and all the while there's a permanent amount of water which is going down in pipes down the bottom of these drains. So there is in fact a regular amount of water that flows along these channels and that of course means that local wildlife doesn't get access to the water so it reduces the number of animals that can drink find water and often find other food in the way of insects amphibians things that would naturally be a food source for larger animals so it's certainly an improvement having these grassy channels but still the water which is the lifeblood of an ecosystem is underneath the ground traveling beneath this it's only when there are flood events that we get water actually above ground but at least the grass and the vegetation is able to actually settle a lot of the sediment and reduce the dirty water getting down to the ocean on the other side of these concrete pipes which you're taking water beneath the road there is the most exciting development that I've seen in my local area ever. And that is over two and a half million dollars have been spent to turn what was a grassy uh, temporary stormwater runoff into a permanent creek. And this is what Melbourne Water have been doing over the last, um, let's say five or six years with their daylighting underwater creeks. So this is Blind Creek Trail and this is where there's been two and a half million dollars spent on daylighting a local creek that goes around a local sporting precinct. And here the community get together to play sports and families also get together to play and the council provides facilities for families to really have everything that keeps the family together on the weekend from sports to play and now to having a functional nature reserve following a new daylighted creek and now in blind creek that's been re-daylighted we have a functional waterway where we have all types of wildlife being drawn back into the suburbs I was really hoping to document and film the construction and the development of this daylighting project but unfortunately the last two years with COVID meant that it's very often impossible to get outside during lockdowns and now that I'm actually able to get outside and show this uh, wonderful achievement of engineering waterways it's actually looking pretty finished. And as all the uh, plantings on the side of the creek on both sides are developing, taking over, the water which is flowing through this permanent waterway is getting a greater and greater higher quality every time it rains. And of course there's enough water flowing that this is now a permanent water source to have wildlife really attracted to this area and with the planting of trees and shrubs and bushes along the waterway 
we are going to get animals form permanent um, homes with nesting of birds we're going to get um, a lot of possums actually uh, make themselves at home in these trees as well as a whole range of other wildlife that just tends to accumulate around water it's really something to see the amount of uh, planting which has been going on with uh, native species which will develop an understory beneath these very old gum trees that have been here luckily without being chopped down but we've got a very small number of very large trees and of course there's no um, secondary canopy beneath them so being so open it makes it very difficult for a lot of uh, wildlife to escape predatory um, eagles falcons owls which will <laughs> will find small animals and eat them very quickly. But as the secondary growth, the understory develops and thickens up, it'll be much, much safer for more animals to make this a permanent home. What's truly amazing about eucalypts is that a tree can be there for decades, have all types of abuse, and end up with a tree that is chopped completely in half and gone. And yet, within weeks or months new growth appears and this tree will grow all over again during the construction phase it was really interesting to watch just how much effort and money went into making the water move um, curve around bends and obstacles they put a lot of rocks into the system so water has to actually actively go over rocks and of course as the flow with rains becomes a bit greater and heavier traveling over these rocks will oxygenate the water and really bring up the quality of the water as it cascades over features like this and then along these sort of separated little what originally we call a billabong these little uh, combinations of permanent ponds which when the flow rate is very low you get these sort of stationary ponds in between when the actual water will flow again with more rain and in these uh, deeper areas where they've made a permanent uh, billabong they've really dug it down quite deep so there's a combination of water levels within this engineered waterway so i can easily imagine certain adult fish which would stay permanently inside some of these quiet deep pond areas whilst uh, faster flowing water um, flows through this creek and flows past them now of course being an aquarium fish keeper you always tend to look in the water and see if you can see things that are moving and right now I'm looking at some fish now I would almost suspect that they are western mosquito fish um, Gambusia because they are a, a pest fish which has taken over the waterways almost the entire Australian continent but as I'm looking at these two little fish right on the side of the water's edge here they are the size of Gambusia but I can just see the tail which is nothing like what a Gambusia tail is so I don't know what it is and of course if I had a net I'd be probably pretty curious to see if I could have a closer look and see what they are but there's life in here these rock steps provide fantastic um, pathways for people to go from one side of this waterway to the other so it's great for kids great for adults to actually get right down to the water when the water's low but when the water is actually rushing quite quickly after a heavy rain event of course again lots of wonderful water oxygenation so these uh, obstacles these rockways very important part of the uh, the habitat and the whole ecosystem last few days we had some very heavy rain and all these waterways filled up very very quickly and with a lot of um, water energy surging down these uh, waterways down these creeks 
and you can see that the vegetation on the side of the bank has actually caught an enormous amount of litter uh, leaf litter as well as other litter but this is how these uh, vegetated riverbanks clean the water because they catch all of this floating debris and that collects down at the base of the plants and becomes part of the soil structure as well for the developing riverbank. Every flooding event bringing more debris, more sand, more silt to the uh, edge of these waterways means that more and more vegetation can get a richer and richer soil structure in which more plants can grow. Just as I'm walking along the riverbank, there are a huge number of dragonflies flying to and fro. I can see butterflies. Uh, there's a very rich population of insects which are collecting around this waterway as they uh, breed and or look for food. And of course these insects then become part of the food web for birds and other larger forms of wildlife. This very attractive plant is an acacia or a wattle and it becomes part of the uh, understory of the eucalypts and they provide lots of seed capsules which are full of very high protein upon which a number of animals will feed and as they do get larger themselves things like um, sugar gliders like to nibble on the trunks of these sort of plants and lick the sweet sticky sap. So they are a magnet to larger animals once they get bigger. There have been more eucalypts planted as well as the secondary understory and these new eucalypts will join the older established trees and become part of the top canopy around this waterway. As well as giving the riverbanks some structural support from flash flooding so that the uh, banks don't cave in and give way, these rocks provide a tremendous um, environment for reptiles. So you can imagine skinks and various lizards and snakes uh, being attracted to these nooks and crannies between all these rocks. As they sun themselves, they get heat from the, uh, the sun as it makes the, the rocks warm and also protection in the cracks and crevices from being found by birds. A lot of the base of this riverbed that we're looking at is totally artificial. It's all been engineered. A lot of time and effort went into concreting and scaping to create these highs and lows and water barriers that would make the water flow have all different turbulence as it goes over and goes past. And as we come over here, further down the channel, what you can just make out is they've actually structured a series of rocks to make channels where there's a deep channel um, in the middle and there are much more shallow channels on both sides for water to flow at different rates over these rocks. There's been a lot of effort in the companion planting of hundreds of species of understory plants from creepers, uh, ground hugging carpets of plants, rushes, reeds and many many plants which will form very dense habitat within which we're going to attract insects and all the animals that will live in the food web from there on up. For people who are living with their backyards adjacent to this magnificent daylighted creek you've got walking paths which are just a joy to walk along on a nice day and smell the incredible smells of the vegetation beginning to take over and of course it also blocks out enormous amounts of sound the sound of cars and the noise of the suburbs is taken away by the uh, silencing effect of all these trees and vegetation. Having this wonderful um, reserve literally in your backyard increases the property values 
of the people lucky enough to live along this waterway. As it gets very, very hot here in Australia, here in Melbourne during summer, I can tell you as I'm walking along now in the shade of these big trees that it's much, much cooler. And of course, it's also very relaxing to be able to walk in a cooler temperature, smelling the beautiful smell of the eucalypts, listening to the water trickling, watching the dragonflies buzzing over the water. And just over here, we have a duck. And we have a family of ducks. And I'm looking now at one, two, three, four, five, six, seven little ducklings on the riverbank with their parents standing guard nearby. In a matter of just two years, what used to be a grassy depression or a big long ditch is now full of life. As well as a number of uh, rock works to take you from one side to the other side of the water, they've also included a fantastic walk bridge. And the great thing about this walk bridge is that the materials will last for, I would say, goodness, maybe a hundred years. There's no timber being used on this bridge whatsoever, and thank goodness for that. One thing that would increase the rate of uptake by wildlife to areas like this, where these trees are not old enough or big enough to have hollows to support parrots or possums or owls, I'd love to see hundreds of nest boxes installed into these taller trees to really encourage a community of larger animals to come to this particular waterway. There are places to stop and rest and sit. We come along to another rock work which we can walk across when the water level is low and I'm doing that right now and getting very close to some more ducks. And really getting this close to nature with uh, families and with children, it, it really makes me very, very confident that we can see nature and wildlife making a return right back into the cities that we live in. And hopefully, of course, the next generation of uh, people are going to appreciate wildlife much more than the older generations ever have. This makes me so confident that the next 20 years in the conservation movement, we are going to see big improvements in how waterways are managed, how we make sure that stormwater is harvested, how stormwater is reduced in its energy flow to not cause damage as it goes through towns and cities. And importantly, that the people who live in towns and cities get to be right up there with their local wildlife. Now there are literally hundreds and hundreds of these little fish which I'm looking at and I actually think they are Gambusia. There's some very large females and lots of very very small young fish. Now being a live bearer they can breed like crazy. Here we've got a storm water runoff which is still in the original grassy depression style and this comes along and joins up to the daylighted creek where there are a number of features to slow down the rushing storm water and then as the water comes along over these stones to then join into the permanent waterway that is Blind Creek. Deliberate uh, construction and planning of these rock works mean that there literally are pathways for people to access one side to another and to really get close to all areas around this creek. 
it's really great to see how what people used to think is rubbish they now realize is a very important part of a habitat and that is fallen trees and very large logs which as they decay they form hollows and places for wildlife to seek refuge from predators instead of being removed to make things look clean and tidy these fallen trees are left deliberately to be a structural part of the ecosystem and what we have in this development is a combination of uh, suburban facilities of sports grounds and playgrounds really now coming to life immediately adjacent to and a part of our natural environment which is moving alongside and beside human activities. So here at Blind Creek we have all the suburban homes, roads and cars which are now being able to live comfortably alongside a living ecosystem where wildlife is your immediate neighbour. And living with nature just becomes a normal part of every day.